Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So at CMC today, we mark rather an important uh, uh, milestone in our development as we expand into the area of uh, publishing. We now have our own university press, CMC Press, uh, and to commemorate this happy occasion, which we hope will attract a lot of significant translations and monographs from Muslim scholars around the world, uh, we are presenting uh, an interview with the uh, author of the first book, which has been published in this series, uh, which is by Ubaidullah Samarqandi, and the translator and editor, the Arabic text is side by side with the English, uh, Professor Leila Damiri, who of course for years has been a, uh, an important part of the trustee team here at, at CMC. And she's going to be interviewed by our newest staff member, Professor Claire Gallien, who uh, comes to us from uh, various institutions, most recently the University of Tübingen, and is now a senior research fellow here at the college. So Claire will be interviewing Leila about the new book and sharing some more general thoughts about Islamic publishing, about the role of the translator, about the significance of the translations generally. So inshallah, it'll be a, a really interesting conversation. We are here at the Cambridge Muslim College to celebrate a very important um, moment, event. Um, that is the, the publication of the first book uh, by CMC Press, which is your translation of um, your translation, Professor Demiri, of uh, Ubaid Allah as the um, so two treatises, on, one on servanthood and the second on repentance. So um, before we start, I, I wanted to introduce um, perhaps yourself to, the, uh, to, the, um, to our audience and then ask you a couple of questions about the book, uh, the manuscripts, um, and these two treatises in particular. So um, Professor Demiri, you are um, chair of um, Islamic doctrine at the uh, Zentrum für Islamische Theologie, so um, Center for Islamic theology uh, at the University of Tübingen in Germany. Um, you work on systematic theology. Um, you work also on um, uh, Christian and Muslim uh, theological um, um, interactions uh, um, and, and debates. And you've also worked a lot on, um, on Ottoman Turkish material and Ottoman Turkish uh, intellectual history. Uh, amongst your many publications. I would just like to quote um, uh, a critical edition and uh, annotated translation with uh, the introduction of Najm din Atufi's uh, commentary uh, uh, of the Christian scriptures. Um, you've also uh, edited uh, the early modern uh, trends in Islamic theology, uh, Abdul Ghani al-Nabulusi, um, you also have a work at the moment in progress uh, on a reader on, on uh, al Nabulusi, um, and you've worked also on uh, edited volumes on Maturidi theology, um, um, on Maturidi theology, and also a volume on green theology. So this is, I mean, the, just to introduce um, our audience again to the wide um, range um, of your uh, scholarship. Um, and now we come to this volume. This volume, which is um, which is a critical edition of two uh, treatises, one on servanthood and the other on repentance, uh, an, an annotated uh, um, translation, which I would also like to call a commentary, but we'll perhaps discuss that just a bit, of a theologian, uh, Maturidi theologian, Ubaid Allah Samarkandi. So I wanted to um, start off really by by asking you. Um, who, um, who uh, 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 Samarkandi uh, really uh, is, and what uh, brought you to, to, to him? Because um, <clears throat> he, he is, he is a, um, a, a contemporary of Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, we know so much of Ibn Taymiyyah, and we know Taymiyyah, and we know so little of, of him. So, uh, what is your relation to, to the author and, and, yeah. and the book? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Claire, first of all, for your very gracious uh, introduction. And also thank you for an invitation to discuss and introduce this uh, book. Um, Ubaid Allah Samarkandi, um, he is, as you rightly put, 
um, an important scholar from his own period, someone who was known in his own time, but unfortunately has been neglected um, later on, and especially in our day. Um, if you Google his name and try to find information about him uh, on, uh, on the internet, um, you will not find um, much about uh, him in English. Mm -hmm. Although there are a few things published in Turkish language, but mm -hmm. unfortunately there is almost nothing about him, very little uh, about him in English. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as his name suggests, Samarkandi, he was originally from Samarkand, uh, from, um, from uh, what we call traditionally Ma'wara un Nahr, Transoxiana region, uh, a region uh, that is known for its scholarship, uh, especially in uh, Maturidi Hanafi tradition. Okay. And so he is an important scholar, a 13th century Hanafi Maturidi scholar, who also got his uh, education in Baghdad. He was then in Damascus and he um, passed away in Damascus and relatively young, at young mm -hmm. age, but he did manage to uh, write a number of treatises. Um, so far, um, among his writings, we have uh, two published editions mm -hmm. of his uh, writings. One of them is uh, um, in Aqida, so mm -hmm. he has a very uh, lovely Aqida text that okay. was published a, a, few, a few years ago. And the second um, two-volumed work in Usul al-Fiqh, mm -hmm. especially where he compares Hanafi and Shafi'i uh, Usul al-Fiqh uh, principles of uh, jurisprudence. So these are the only publications with, that we have of his works. And hence, I uh, felt uh, very much compelled uh, that we make him um, visible in mm. our scholarly discourse, because altogether, Maturidi studies um, is um, relatively mm. limited. We have relatively limited knowledge about that tradition mm. uh, nowadays, although in recent years, uh, there is an increasing number of studies mm. in the field, but still, it is much less known than Ash'ari tradition, for instance, mm. and, and therefore um, we hope um, also mm. as, as college that um, this will be a contribution in Maturidi studies as a whole, but also in knowing um, this particular scholar, Ubaidullah Samarkandi. Mm. I mean, there are many scholars who are known who have this nisba of Samarkandi because mm. they are coming from that uh, particular region of Islamic learning, uh, and um, his name uh, with this publication will be, mm. we hope, uh, mm. uh, more known. So my um, um, initial encounter with this uh, author was uh, by reading his Aqidah, which was um, published and critically edited one by one of my former professors and teachers in Istanbul. And um, so therefore, that was the uh, first um, encounter encounter by Mustafa Sinanoğlu, mm. Professor Mustafa Sinanoğlu. Um, so this is, uh, as you said, annotated translation, but this is also a critical edition of his two treatises. Uh, one treatise on servanthood, um, Risalat al and uh, the second uh, one on Tawbah, on repentance. Mm. So the first one is about uh, the relationship between uh, Abd and Ma'bud, between a servant and uh, the creator. And he who is worshipped and uh, who is to be served. Um, and the second treatise is about what happens um, when that relationship is broken or when that relationship is in danger or that relationship is not going yeah. the way it should be. So I mean, the two treatises uh, go beautifully together. I was actually wondering when reading, uh, when reading them if you had... Um, um, are they part of a larger corpus, or are they just like the two treatises that we have left of? of uh, there are a number of other treatises as well, okay. and they are still waiting in libraries to be published. To be published. Uh, so there are treatises. Um, um, so far, um, according to my knowledge, we have a number of treatises in Soleimania Library. Mm -hmm. So both uh, of these treatises, I've relied on three particular manuscripts and for each of mm -hmm. these texts and mm -hmm. those were the only ones that I could manage mm -hmm. to find. Uh, so some of them are in Soleimania, some of them are in Bursa, some of them are in Kastamonu, but also in my recent visit to British Library I managed to find a Risale by him in, oh. uh, at, at British Library that is not uh, even properly catalogued so it would be good to, um, to look uh, yeah. further what he yeah. has to offer.
for us. Yeah, yeah. And for scholars and students in the UK, perhaps like some occasion to uh, continue <laughs> what you started for, for us. Um, so I was, um, uh, so the, these, these two um, treatises, they are written in the genre of the Risala. And uh, one of the beautiful thing about this literature, I thought, is that it's a very mixed genre. Um, as you said, we, we are um, really dealing with, with a scholar who was um, a mutakallim, who was um, so a theologian, who was also working in fiqh. I mean, he, he really covers many sciences, including tasawwuf, of course. And this comes together in a way in, in each of these treatises. Like, you can see where he becomes uh, a scholar of fiqh and when he turns to Ad Kalam, so the, the consequences of, for instance, Tawbah on, uh, on your relation with God, or then when he becomes a Sufi, or when, when he becomes a biographer of the Sufis. I mean, uh, so how, as a translator, I was just wondering, because when one, is a transla one translates a text and then you really get accustomed to the language of the author. Now, how did you deal with this genre, with this, uh, as a translator, where they do you recall having like specific difficulties in the in translating uh, um, this text in particular? Mm -hmm. Well, he's an author who um, also makes it easy to read the text that he writes. Oh. Um, if you look at his Aqidah text, although, as you mentioned, he, as a mutakallim, he does bring uh, some important theological points, he makes some important theological mm. points, but he does that in a very smooth and easy way, so mm -hmm. it makes the reader, um, he helps the reader uh, to, to follow his points. Uh, mm -hmm. So he is um, uh, an ideal author in that way, mm -hmm. who presents um, complex and com complicated uh, questions in a very simple way. Uh, but of course, um, these two tre treatises, we should treat them as treatises more of a practical theology type yeah. of treatises yeah. rather than heavy kalam discussions. That's not his intention. Mm. Here, his intention is really to show you um, in, as, a, as a believer, as a worshiper, if um, in your spirituality, what kind of principle you should be following in your relationship with the mm. creator. And also, if you fail in your duties, how do you Mm. mend that mm. relationship. Mm. So he really simplifies the mm. reading, although, of course, he refers to a number of scholars, Ash'ari scholars, Maturidi scholars, a number of um, early Sufi authorities, and he blends that. Um, uh, he, he offers a mix of information from mm. different types of literature, but he makes it re easy, really. Mm. So therefore, as a translator, he also made my <laughs> uh, job easy I in that see, sense. Um, yeah. So it's, it's beautifully, uh, yeah. Um, uh, written and uh, so very smooth. Th this critical edition is wonderful because not only you know uh, we we are not only we are you know reading two splendid uh, risala in your splendid translations. Really, it really reads a it's a beautiful flow. Um, we are not only discovering a forgotten uh, theologian, uh, but we are also perhaps um, um, expanding our understanding of of kalam literature. Uh, you mentioned you know, this is practical theology, so it's a type of kalam, but that's you know uh, serving a specific purpose, and um, so um, expanding our our understanding of how kalam functions in in, um, in Islam. Um, I, I wanted to ask you if perhaps we could uh, maybe read a passage on the Obudiya because uh, this is the um, the very beginning of of the first treatise, and um, the the author is a very beautiful. Um, um, definition of um, of the term of the concept of servanthood, what it means to be a servant in Islam. Um, so I'll, I'll let you perhaps uh, read your translation on this. Truly, the degree of human perfection is through observing the duties in the service of the worshipped one, the sublime. God the Exalted says in a Hadith Qudsi, O child of Adam, I am the king. Whenever I will something, I say to it be, and it becomes. I am the living who never dies. So obey me, and I will make you a king. Whenever you would will something, you will say be, and it will become. I will make you alive, and you will not die. 
God the Exalted also says in his clear revelation, I created the jinn and humankind only to worship me. The perfection of one's freedom from anything other than God is commensurate to his worship of God the Exalted with the body, ibadah, his servanthood to him with the heart, ubudiya, and his servitude to him with the spirit, or Buddha. These three stations occur through striving, endurance, and witnessing. He who offers his self, nafs, in the service of God the Exalted is called sahib ibada, or man of worship. He who offers his heart, qalb, in the service of God the Exalted is called sahib ubudiya, or man of servanthood. And he who offers his spirit, ruh, to the service of God the Exalted is called sahib or Buddha or man of servitude. Beautiful. So this is really um, encompassing um, the, uh, an Islamic understanding of, of, of worship, of servanthood uh, and servitude. So there's a three, three station. And, and coming to the, to the amazing understanding that servanthood and servitude to Allah is a form of freedom. Uh, which I found very, uh, very profound, very important. And also, um, each of these, he relates to a familiar threefold categorization of certainty, yaqeen. Mm. So he says, ilmul yaqeen, um, corresponding to serving God with one's body, aynul yaqeen, achieved by serving God with one's heart, mm -hmm. and haqqal yaqeen, uh, the highest degree of certainty that corresponds to Samarkandis or Buddha, that is serving God with one's spirit, mm. and that's the highest level of serving God and worshipping Him. The one important aspect also of your translation is that, so not only you worked on the, so on, uh, as you said, um, original manuscripts, um, so editing the manuscripts, uh, translating them, uh, introducing them, uh, so as a critical edition, but also uh, providing a wide array, a uh, wide range of footnotes, which are really, really helpful uh, to your reader, I think contemporary reader also, in, um, in understanding uh, the text itself. And, and as, I was, as I was reading the text, your translation and then the footnotes, I thought, well, actually, this is a share of, uh, of the book you, you <laughs> you're offering us as well. So it's a uh, not only a translation, it's a really, uh, I just, uh, so for instance, I will just give um, our um, audience one example. Uh, when uh, you, uh, for, for instance, um, yes, on, on, uh, on page 69 of, of the book, uh, when, uh, so I'm just going to read the, the, the passage in the footnote. Um, so the passage is um, a section on, on Tauba. So the, the author stops and he's going to discuss um, some specificity about, uh, some specific point about Tauba. Tauba, as an attribute of God the Exalted, indicates his guiding the servant to turn to him in repentance, making him remain firm on his repentance and accepting his repentance. For the tauba of the servant means return from the path of remoteness to the path of nearness. Return from the path of remoteness to the path of nearness. Um, Matab indicates that to which one returns. And the tauba of God the exalted means his making the traits of his mercy and grace return to his servant after he had earned his punishment or his estrangement and his contempt. And, and so the passage continues, of course, but your footnote then has al-tawab, uh, so the ever-relenting, as one of the 99 names of God, indicates for Samarkandi, firstly, that God facilitates repentance for his servants by guiding them to repent. And secondly, that he makes them firm in their repentance. And thirdly, that he accepts their repentance. So, even the turning of the sinner to God, uh, so the human tawbah, is a divine act and divine mercy, and is encompassed within God's turning to the servant. This is the divine tawbah. So this is really your um, interpretation of, um, of the text, your commentary on the text, which I found very, very 
beautiful to also, um, I was going to say, not just be a translator, uh, but also uh, sort of turning to your reader and your audience to, uh, to, 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 to provide th this commentary. So I was wondering, as you started this text and you went through the translation, was it something that you were clear about as you started, or was it something that gradually sort of... Uh, um, um, impose itself on, on, onto you as, as you were going through the text, and so how, how that sort of translator, commentator uh, um, um, identity, perhaps. Um, um, how, how did you deal with 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 this aspect of of your work? Well, as you know, when we work with texts, um, especially mm. if we are critically editing them. So working with manuscripts, we have ma manuscript images mm. on our computers that we try to type and then we compare with mm. uh, different manuscripts, different texts. So we really get familiarized uh, very well with the text. And mm. once we start translating, then again, sometimes the translation you see, it doesn't work and you need to go back to the manuscripts and to look again at various words. Perhaps I misread it, perhaps I didn't mm. notice. Um, mm. Maybe there is something missing there. Yeah. So we really get very well acquainted with the text. And mm. so therefore, there is, um, a, there is a certain bond that develops between the text mm. and with the author himself as well. And mm -hmm. um, when we read the text numerous, numerous times and mm. uh, we feel that we start understanding it better than our first reading or very mm. first encounter. So in a way, the text speaks to us rather than we imposing our ideas on mm. it or mm. we making a shadow. So I wouldn't say that I'm really making a shadow there, okay. but I, it feels uh, to me that is very obvious. This is what the text is saying to me mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. saying to us mm -hmm. when we read it numerous times. So yeah. I hope that those comments that I have are not going to be an obstacle, but they're going to facilitate mm -hmm. the readers um, to get uh, better connected to the author, the original author, and better connected to the um, to his ideas and they do. what he is explaining. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I wonder also if um, maybe that will be my. Um, um, Last question, uh, but um, the um, so there is an aspect in this work which is really um, these are treatises about servanthood, repentance. So they are uh, centered on the um, individual, you know, your practical uh, um, ibada, and also your your uh, as an individual, as as a believer, your connection with with God. But I also found a very interesting link between. Um, uh, the individual in repentance and the type of society that we can build based on such individuals. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if that was something also that um, struck you as, as you translated the text, that this was not just a te text about the believer and his or her relation to uh, God, but also the type of society we build in repentance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's very important. That's a very important point that you are raising because that's exactly how he finishes his treatise. Mm -hmm. he, he, the entire treatise is about how you should turn back to God, how you're um, correcting yourself. Mm -hmm. But the last note um, is about in integrity in mm -hmm. repentance and how you should uh, look others around you, people who repent and how um, you are not allowed to reproach someone after they have repented. So there is no way for you to reproach anyone, to criticize any, anyone. I think the term he uses is even permissibility, you know, it's impermissible. Exactly, it? exactly. Yeah. Um, so he turns our attention to the way uh, we should be treating others uh, around us um, who may not be doing the right things and who might be in need of repentance and his message is really clear and he says it is impermissible to upbraid and scold those who commit many errors or those who constantly commit error. And also at the very very end of, of, of uh, the, the Risala uh, when he says that uh, good is a habit and evil is a habit and the soul is habituated. So whatever you are habituated with it will be habituated with that thing. Mm. And, and the idea of being close to the people of, I mean, close in nearness, you know, to the people of, of Tauba. Mm. Um, yeah. 
So this is important note that he's closing with uh, his Risala, that the human being is a creature of habit and that making the task of training the soul um, is of great importance since no one is evil by nature. That's what he wants to say. Mm. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. hence the importance of repentance, um, which needs to be turned into a habit mm. itself. Okay. Well, um, I thank you very much uh, for, this, for this translation, for this critical edition. Um, I didn't mention it, but there is also, uh, I mean, I did mention the introduction, but there is also, you know, large bibliography, indexes of the Quranic verse, hadith uh, quoted in the text. It's really a beautiful, uh, beautiful edition, uh, beautiful translation, and uh, an amazing start for the CMC Press. Uh, it was um, an honor and a, a blessing to, uh, to have you with us. Uh, thank you for your time, for your <laughs> time in this time now. Uh, and and uh, wish you the best of, uh, of success. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.